Hello everyone and welcome to our latest video on our BN channel. Welcome everyone to how to make a rear-wheel drive drift car tutorial in automation game. Yes, my friends, it's finally here. Thanks to our dearest friend, Mr. Merlin. He will be, of course, helping us in this video, explaining step by step on how to create a rear-wheel drive drift car in automation game so you can actually drift it in beam ng without any trouble i mean the results are absolutely sublime amazing really i mean as we all know drifting a car in automation or making a drift car in automation then drive it in beam ng is really a nightmare it's like a, a proper nightmare it's so difficult it's so hard but thanks to mr merlin it's actually now doable as you'll be seeing later he made a brilliant car he explained everything step by step on how to make it and i drove it at the end and i'm so impressed really so have fun enjoy this video and tell me what you think about it in the comment section below and of, and of course now it's time to give the microphone to our dearest friend mr merlin so he can explain step by step on how to create a rear-wheel drive drift car in automation so enjoy the video and here's your mic mr merlin So building a drift car in BeamNG in automation. I can start off with disclaimer already. It's insanely hard to drift in uh, BeamNG, especially using an automation built car. So I would strongly recommend using a wheel. I'm not saying it's impossible to do with uh, other controllers, but I strongly recommend the wheel. Also another thing what I really recommend is using an already built car because those are easier to adjust for drifting and it takes less time for you to go through the insane amount of trial and error you have to do to make the car pretty nicely driftable. But I'm gonna start off with building a completely new one. The idea behind a drift car when you're trying to build a completely new one, I would suggest uh, um, thinking of a vehicle that would be like from mid to low range, as in just a family cruiser, coupe, like light sports car, just casual sports car, family sports, around those lines and all the way to like budget. When it comes to wheelbases, it actually is easier to drift if you're using a longer wheelbase. But I want to go somewhere mid-ground. Oh, these bodies, I love these ones. These ones. I'm not trying to go into build a professional drift guard with all carbon body or fiberglass body and everything so on. This is going to be something an everyday person can build in real life and go to a track and drift it. So, I'm gonna go with randomly corrosion resistant steel, monocoque, and galvanized steel for chassis. Engine placement. Front longitudinal. Longitudinal. Please. If you want to go rear engined, it's gonna be a nightmare. The car will spin out instantly. So, usually put the engine in the front and real will drive. When it comes to suspension, mm, something for a bit of a cheap end. McPherson's and semi-trailing arm. Okay, now when it comes to engines, for starters, I strongly recommend building engines from 100 to 200 horsepower. That doesn't sound a lot, and it's not exactly wrong. But as we all know in BMG, it's so easy to get sideways in almost any kind of power. So. To go sideways while controlling it, I suggest small amount of power. For this build, I'm gonna start a new project, I don't care about the names honestly. And I'll see how much power I get out of it, somewhere between 100 and 200 I'll be satisfied with. We don't care about front wheel drive, oh it doesn't, okay, <laughs> blacked out. So. Let's do it like BMW does, because 3 Series BMWs, perfect drift cars. So, inline, 6, aluminium, don't care about all-wheel drive or 4x4. <laughs> Capacity. Mm, I want a bit more low-end torque, so 3 liter, that's too basic. Maybe a bit lower. 
I'll try with 2.8 and squared out engine. 84.5. That's a bit too much. Just 84. What do we end up with? Oh, precisely under 2.8. Great. So, dual cams, four valves, and aluminium head. A bit slightly advanced engine for the 9092, but. It's going to work flawlessly in that case. Cast add-in. We're not making much power. Doesn't matter. Compression, cam profile, VV, VVTs, VVLs. Doesn't really matter right now. I'll um, adjust that when I figure out everything. Now, turbos. I suggest going naturally aspirated. Because with turbos, you get turbo lag. And adjusting the turbo is a bit iffy. And if you're doing a drift and you get in a slow speed and you get um, get into the turbo lag zone, you're gonna straighten out instantly. So I would suggest naturally aspirate to have the perfect torque curve. So injection, multipoint, configuration, single with performance intake. That sounds about right. What do we get? Race intake. It's not far, honestly, what you can do with the drift car. Premium fuel, RPM limit. I would like six and a half thousand. Exhaust. Normally, for drift vehicles, there is no cat, no mufflers, just straight pipe it. But for the sake of this video, so people can actually hear me talk, I'm going to add something that dampens the sound. I'd rather have higher compression than a really high ignition timing, because I don't want the top horsepower being so far uh, into the RPM range. So, 191 horsepower, pretty basic, I barely have done anything, and this is already a pretty decent engine. Drivetrain, real-wheel drive obviously, manual, 5-speed. Manual locker. Always go with the manual locker, because you just, as soon as you spawn into the car, just lock it immediately and it will replicate a welded differential. You can go with a geared LSD or any kind of an LSD, but when you're doing really small angles, it's, it acts a bit iffy in my opinion, so locked differential is probably the best. You can actually drift really well even with an open differential, but then small angles are impossible. Adjustments estimate stop speed of 253, so let's adjust something like that. I'll deal with the gearing later, because that is actually pretty important. Radials, medium compound. Here comes the tricky part. You actually want grip, but you don't want too much grip, otherwise you will not be able to get sideways. It really depends on how much horsepower you have, honestly. This scenario with 190 horsepower, I kind of have found a pretty nice balance. So, tire width, I like to go 220s squared, with a rim diameter of 16, and tire diameter, diameter a lot thicker. Something like this, and alloy rims. So, let's space them out ridiculously so they fit really nicely in the wheel wells. Like, like how a drift car should. Yeah, that's about right. Fixtures, I'll do them later, so doesn't matter. Drums, vented discs, two piston, solid disc, two piston, could work pretty easily. Aerodynamics. Usually they don't matter at all because they're not drifting at such high speeds where they actually do something. Do you want to increase cooling to at least, I don't know, 65? Because you're, you're gonna be hitting the rev limiter quite a bit, so we want to make it pretty light. So, no rear seats, interior, basic, with no entertainment. I'm not gonna mess with quality sliders, even though you can get with, get it a lot lighter with plus 15 quality over here, I don't really wanna mess with that. Driver ads. Hydraulic, we don't care about ABS and safety. I mean, lightest this is no safety, but... I kind of prefer having some, not like it matters, but it adds, it's, it won't get extremely light, because if you also have an extremely light car with a lot, with even not that much horsepower, it's gonna be a nightmare to control. 
So this is kind of a balance I found with add, having no interior and no rear seats while still and having safety you get decentish weight distribution and weight in general. Springs. Standard gas monotube. Yeah, that's about right. I want it to be slammed to the ground like a drift car should. Now, suspension tuning. Let's start off with just something normal. Randomly normal. Camber. I like to do front camber all the way up to minus 5 degrees. Why? Because it helps you out a lot when it comes to holding an angle. You can actually hold a slightly bigger angle with such high camber in the front wheels than with um, normal camber and minus 1.5 for rear wheels. Sounds about right. Sway bars. I don't want the car to be jiggly at all. I mean, some jiggliness is alright, but just a little bit stiffer. Height to zero. Springs. Front springs. I usually go with drivability, like just slightly over drivability or exactly on drivability factor over here. Rear. I would suggest being slightly softer. It doesn't look really good in the graph. It doesn't look good at all. But trust me, you want some softness in the back for the car to use some, uh, some of its actual body weight to slide out while not having too much of a low angle. All right, so we finished tuning the car perfectly to make it a real drift missile. And now, of course, it's time to talk about how this thing looks. So as you can see, Mr. Merlin, he took care of the mechanical tuning. I took care of the visual tuning. Now, as you can see, this thing, I, I, I tried my best to make it to look like a street, you know, street tuned uh, or, you know, a garage tuned drift car or drift missile, basically with carbon fiber touch-ups there and there, like the hood, some vents, and some awesome stickers. And, you know, as you can see, the paint and uh, this carbon fiber side mirrors, the lines, and then the jokes on the car. So it is. It, this thing looks like basically a garage-made and tuned drift missile. And of course, the name Cerva, uh, which is in Italian, uh, which, which means a deer or the deer, you know, basically. Uh, which is like Bambi, for example. So yeah, I mean, it's a it's an awesome it's an awesome looking beast. And of course, as you'll be seeing in a moment, this thing drifts like crazy. I've never had so much fun before uh, driving and drifting a rear-wheel drive car like this one. I mean, I've, I've tried my best in the past, but thanks to Mr. Merlin, he found the secret sauce. So let's enjoy watching and let's see how this thing actually drives. <laughs>
And that is all my friends for our video for tonight. Tell me what you think about it in the comment section below. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. If you are new, get subscribed, share the video if you want to share it. And of course, hit that notification bell button so you don't miss any new video that we release. And of course, if you enjoy the video and if you are going to create an awesome drift, real drive drift machine car, of course, I would love to see the results of that. You can send a picture on my Discord. You can send a video if you want to on my Discord as well. The link in the description below. I would love to see your awesome rear-wheel drive drift missiles, you know, going sideways on every single corner. I would love to see that. And of course, big thanks for Mr. Merlin for making this video possible with, with his amazing with his amazing mechanical tune in an automation game to make this thing possible because in the past all-wheel drive drifting or all-wheel drive power sliding or, or like what, what most people call it it was it was a common thing real drive was nearly impossible and now of course thanks to this video you can actually do it and you can have so much fun going sideways in beam ng with any real drive automation made car using this specific tune so enjoy creating your awesome cars i would love to see the results and i will see you my friends very very soon with more videos more challenges and more automation creations so thank you so much gentlemen for watching thank you so much for your amazing support and of course if you love my work if you want to support the channel the link in the description below for my patreon page you can sign up to our patreon page download all of my all, all of my personal replica made cars in automation game because yes I've made many, many real-life replica cars in automation. You can download all of them and drive them in your BeamNG. You can also become a VIP member. You can also create your own challenge with your own rules on my Discord. Everything is available on my Patreon page. And of course, big thanks to all of my awesome Patreon subscribers. You guys rock really hard. So thank you so much for supporting me and thank you so much for making everything possible. So that's pretty much it, my friends, for tonight. I will be seeing you very, very soon. Stay safe. Stay at home and keep creating automa amazing automation cars and I will see you very, very soon. Thank you so much and goodbye for now, my friends.